Hi, this is William Naden, and I'm going to be talking about Sonar Cakewalk by BandLab. It's a free DAW. You can download it from BandLab.com. It's my favorite DAW. It's my DAW of choice. And you can just download it and get started right away. So here I've opened up the program. It shows a start screen. Here it has options for recent projects. It open, you can open up a file explorer for existing projects if you, if you want to find something more specific that you've made or you can find templates for a new project. All these same controls can be found up at the top tab under file. You can select new or open or have the start screen come back from there. Before we get into that, I want to take a look at preferences. So in the edit tab, we go to preferences. There's two things I want to look at from here. The first thing is your drivers. So typically when you record music, you'll have what's called a centerpiece. Now a really good centerpiece that a lot of people use is Focusrite. I use a centerpiece called Babyface Pro. A centerpiece is something that your microphones and your instruments or even your guitar amps or whichever plugs into and then the centerpiece plugs into your computer. Now a centerpiece will come with its own software, its own drivers, which are very powerful. So the whole point of this is to reduce latency. Now latency is the amount of time it takes for the instrument or my voice through the microphone to get through into the DAW. Now if it's high latency, what I say is going to happen a second later. So that's not ideal. We want to reduce the latency as much as possible so that when I say something, it happens right away. Or when I play something, I hear what I play when I play it. All right. So that's ideal for recording. We don't want any lag. We don't want any lag whatsoever. So what a centerpiece driver is going to do for you is it's going to help reduce the latency. Now in this first tab here, after you install the drivers for your centerpiece, you need to go in here and make sure they're enabled. Okay, so as you can see here, I have all my ASIO Fireface drivers that came with my Babyface Pro, and they're all enabled here. What is not enabled is the native driver that came with Windows 10, which I'm using. Down below, the second thing I want to look at is under the v VST settings tab. So in here, what you're going to look at is where your VSTs are kept. Now a VST is a virtual instrument. And if you're going to be recording music and you want a lot of cool sounds, VSTs are going to be your best friend. So you can find VSTs anywhere online for piano, for guitar. I use some great VSTs that I use in all my music. So three main VSTs that I use is Archetype for Trucci, uh, the for my guitars, I use Analog Lab for my synthesizers, and I use Addictive Drums for my drum set. So you need to make sure that Cakewalk knows where to find your VSTs though, okay? So when you install Cakewalk, it's going to install into your program files and when you s install any VST that you find uh, it could be for free or you could purchase them they're also going to install in your program files and so wherever you install that if they're in a VST folder or a Steinberg folder or in your Cakewalk folder under VST plugins you just need to make sure that wherever they're installed you need to add them into this scan pass so that Cakewalk can find them okay so we'll go ahead and cancel out of this. We'll pull up our start screen. We will click on new project and I'm just going to open up the basic project. Okay, so we just opened up a basic default file. I'm going to be showing you the tools and what we're looking at for my workflow. So I'm not going to show you everything but just what's necessary to get you started as quickly and efficiently as possible. So here's what we're looking at. 
we have our timeline here in the middle. We have audio tracks and MIDI tracks. Those are going to be the main sources and how to make music. Above we have a console and we can press C, which will hide it, and press C again, which will open it. Up above we have our time. It'll show us where we are on the timeline according to seconds, or we can even change how it reads time by measures. And so it can be very precise. I like to just leave it on seconds. Below that we have our tempo or BPM. BPM is beats per minute. That'll tell us how fast or slow our song is. We can change the value simply by typing in a new value or we can change it incrementally by the plus and minus buttons next to the numbers. Next to that is our time signature. We can change the time signature from 4-4 four, four to any 6-8, 3-4, doesn't matter. Whatever the song needs. So we can hit OK on that. And as you can see, it's changed the ruler above our timeline to correspond with the time signature. To the right of that is our metronome settings. This will enable or disable playback, the metronome for playback and recording. So if it's off and I press spacebar, which is our stop and go button, you won't hear anything. But if I enable the metronome during playback, you will hear it. So I'm going to press spacebar again. Now down below, we have console view. Now you can just simply click down here on the console. You can exit at any time to bring it back. You just go up to the Views tab, go down and click Console View, and it'll bring up the faders again. So these are the, the faders and panners for each track in our timeline. And this will adjust the volume, the levels, as well as which ear that the track is panned to. To the right here, we have the master, the master fader as well as a fader for our metronome. So in case the metronome is too loud or too quiet. Also, which is a useful tip, you can just drag and drop any like MP3 into the timeline. It'll load it up. And here we can just load up sound and we'll have a file ready to go. So if we hit spacebar and we hear hit the spacebar for play, hear that. And so typically uh, I just like to drag in mp3s. I'm not sure every different kind of audio file works necessarily in Cakewalk, but if you just drag and drop any mp3, it'll load up the it will load up the sound file. And so just really quick, I'm going to hide myself. So down to the right, we can zoom in or out to kind of show us where we are as well as we can double click on a track and it'll blow it up so we can see even closer where things are. We can just simply double click that track again and it'll make it small again. And down here we also have our buses and we can insert as many buses as we like Buses are good in case you want to group things like reverb into a single track and then control all the reverbs or, or one kind of reverb just by pulling one fader down instead of each one individually. I can get more into that later. So those are our basic tools. I'm going to open up a file and then we can look at a song and more editing tools at our disposal. All right, so I just opened up a project that I've been working on. It has three different guitar tracks. They're all audio tracks and a MIDI track to play the melody. Uh, it's just a placeholder for the, the vocals that still have to be recorded for the song. 
As you can see, none of the tracks are named, so I'm going to go ahead and name them. Guitar Center, and then this one can be Guitar Left, and this one can be Guitar Right. Okay, and then just name that Melody. So there's nothing going on here in this MIDI track, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. We don't need it. All right, so I'm just going to play a little bit of the song for you really quick. As you can see, we have the different tracks, and the tracks correspond to the tracks up here in our timeline. So the down here in the console view relates to what we have up here. When you select a track, it will be highlighted. And so the highlighted track will also be highlighted down below. As you can see, when I click on a, any given track, it's highlighted. Now, for the track, we can change its track color and that will help us even more to distinguish which track goes where. So as you can see, it's just one, two, three, four. It's, it's all the red, green, and we can change the colors down here as well. And I can grab the icon of the track and drag it anywhere so I can change the order and the order will actually change down below as well so whichever makes sense to you place your tracks and organize them now if it was me I would place my guitar my rhythm guitars first and then my lead guitar I can actually rename this to guitar lead okay and then I would probably have the melody or the singing. Okay, so the color that you select also changes the color on the timeline. So it's like you can see it's green, but I can change it to pink, and there it'll be pink on the timeline. So typically, I want all the same kind of instruments to be in a group together in, in the same color. And that way, it's easier for me to just see what I am dealing with. So here I can change it and then if you have a lot a big file with lots of different tracks that way it's easier to just look down when you're mixing and adjusting the different levels of which ones you want to work on. So here we have on each track they have a mute, a solo, an arm for recording, and an input echo. So for now we're just going to focus on the mute and the solo. The mute does what it says, it mutes it so you won't hear the track. If you want to solo it, you'll only hear that track. You can also solo and mute multiple tracks at a time. And you can turn them all off anytime by hitting the master mute and solo all tracks up at the top and as well as turn them all on. So this is useful for when you want to quickly just hear one thing or mute one thing and it helps for workflow. Below that we have down at the bottom of the track we have the input the input will relate to your centerpiece. So down here for the MIDI, I usually just have the input on either none or omni, and it'll typically auto detect if I have something plugged in. Now, let's get into the tools. So for the tools, 
we have, I usually just use two tools. I use the smart tool and here I can click and hold and then drag my mouse down to split and then release the click and there I've selected my split tool. So I usually just rely just on those tools. So what I'm going to do for the purpose of this video, is I'm going to grab this, just this one guitar clip. I'm going to make sure it starts here at the first beat of the measure. I'm going to hit control C, which is copy. And then I'm going to hit control V for paste. Now this is useful for when you're building a track and you want to quickly duplicate things. So uh, like a, a rhythm part and you just want to hear how the whole thing sounds and then you want to mix and match them around and see how you want to construct your song. So with the smart tool, depending on where your cursor is over, it will display certain icons. So I can extend the track any which way. I can hover the mouse over the top corner and that can click and drag in a fade in and on the other end a fade out. I can also remove them. And here in the center of the clip, I can click and hold and then I can drag that to anywhere on the timeline as well as the different tracks. Okay, so once I have the clip selected and I've copied it, I can paste it. And there's multiple pastings. Now, I can, if I only want half of it or there's something I want to change in the clip, I can just simply grab my split tool and I can cut any clip in half and then I have a smaller clip to work with, voila. So I can press Control Z anytime, remember, to undo any action if I don't think it's the right action. So if I zoom up really close, and I take a look here, I can see that it's kind of a hard wall, a hard cut, so I just wanna make sure that my the beginning of my clip is extended out just a little bit so that it creates some kind of flow instead of a little and I can do that to each clip that I paste. Now I, if I do that before the timing might not be right because if as you see as I selected it and there's a little bit of a, a tail opening a beginning and I, I hit control C and then I go later in the timeline and hit control V uh, it's not going to start right on the first beat so if I play it from here there's a little pause. If I back it up a bit and play it, it's more seamless because it's on time. Just some things to be aware. Also, depending on which clip we have or which track we have selected, the which one is highlighted, our copy track will paste there. And so we just want to be careful which track we have highlighted. So those are the two main tools. Now, the snap tool will help us if we want to make ever so slight changes. Now, typically, I'll go back here at the beginning of the timeline. Typically, when grabbing a clip and moving it, it's going to move in increments. As you can see, it's always snapping. It's always just moving by stutters. Okay, so the reason for that is there's the snap tool enabled. Snap tool. Uh, you can change the increments so I can set it to 1 8 and it's smaller or actually excuse me bigger increments I can set it to one uh, thir uh, 30 second note and now it's even smaller increments or I can turn the snap off and here I can just move it around freely now be careful when moving things around freely because you might mess up the timing so I just want to zoom in here really quick and as you can see, the first note on this to guitar take is a little bit ahead of the very first beat. So maybe I want to change that. So I'm going to grab my split tool. I'm going to make a cut. And then I'm going to grab my smart tool. Now if I move it, if I move 
the file incrementally, that can work. Uh, if I my increments are too small, as you can see, it's not perfectly aligned. So sometimes it's just fast and helpful to just take the snap off altogether, and then you can move it freely. And there you have it. And so if you ever you move a single note, just be sure just to avoid any clippings that it transitions well back into the clip. Uh, you want to maybe drag in some fade in, fade outs at the at the edges. Uh, typically, maybe you just want to redo the entire take, but if it's a long take and you just have one little mistake or one little note that's too soon or too early, maybe, maybe you can make a, a quick little fix with your split tool. So that is the basic tools that I use. So down below, we have the console. Now the, the mixers, the faders, and the panners. So these are going to adjust the levels. Now just important to note that it's not about what you play, but how you play it. So if you play something very aggressively and very harshly, right? you're picking the guitar uh, very roughly or you're singing very loudly, um, just because you take the level and you drag it down so that it's quieter, it will still sound rough. It'll still sound as if you're singing very loudly, just the levels are lower. And so you can think of mixing more creatively in that it's not just volume control, it's also what's the most important or what's the forefront of the song. So just, uh, just a little side note. How you control this is you can do it multiple ways. You can just click and drag and move the faders. You can type in a, a value down here, uh, like negative six, hit enter. And you can do the same for the panner, which ear it goes to. And you can double click any of these knobs anytime and it'll send the value back to zero, back to default. Okay, I hope this helped, and if there's any further questions, let me know. I may have missed something. Otherwise, have a good one.